Well, welcome to another bye week. How often do we do these, John? Is it once a month we do these shows? Once a month. I wish it were sooner, but yeah, it's once a month. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here we are again, folks, back by popular demand, as they say. Um, the questions and comments and, and notes we're getting back from these interviews we're doing together seems to be very, 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 very popular. So here we go again. John, thanks very much for inviting me or vice versa. And it's good to see you, buddy. You as well, brother. Always good to talk with you during the week <laughs> and all of your various travels and escapades around the world. Uh, you just got back, what, about a, two weeks ago from Vietnam? A couple of weeks ago, yeah. Um, I recovered very quickly after the jet lag, but what, mm -hmm. what a trip that was. I mean, look, I've got so much to talk about with Asia. Like, first of all, the lies that people tell you about it is completely not what I was saying. Well, I would say there was a lot of surprises basically about how they're doing the economy and everything, John. Um, Thailand, mm -hmm. Cambodia, Malaysia, Singapore, and Vietnam. But Vietnamese, uh, Vietnam to me was the most interesting place because um, the people are super nice. They've got, it's an, uh, I went to a beach resort, well, beach city called Da Nang, which you'll hear a lot in the Vietnam movies, you know. Sure. Up in Da Nang, because that we you can clearly see where the, the border was in the south and the north, and then up to Hanoi, which was communist. Well, the whole country is kind of communist, mm -hmm. but that's a, a good point, John, because it's not the first communist country I've been to, but it is the the one that I was surprised about the most because uh they're very, very what would be the word? Um industrious. They've all got their side little hustle going on. They're busy. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got so many people selling fresh vegetables and fruits and, and meat and fish on the street. I didn't see one supermarket in the whole place. I'm sure they're there, but, you know, you saw convenience stores, kind of a 7-Eleven type deal. But everybody, no obesity, everybody looked like they're in good physical condition because, A, they're walking a lot, and, B, they're eating healthy, fresh food that's just brought in from the farmlands outside of it. But economically-wise... Everywhere I went to, I mean, okay, I would, you know, I went to, but Hanoi is not a particularly tourist city. It's a big city, but there's construction going on. They've all got nice uh, cars and trucks, Toyotas, and I know they pay a premium in Asia. They're not like, they're not priced um, so attractively as they are in the States, and, and people are busy. And I didn't see any poverty. I don't think I saw any homeless people. The streets were, very clean i wouldn't say immaculate but reasonably clean i didn't i don't remember like trash blowing around everywhere so it was a very very eye-opening trip considering what we've been told about these countries oh it's third world and everyone's dying the poverty dengue mosquitoes everywhere you know pharmacies are well stocked and, and people are friendly and, and they're healthy and appreciative they're very mm -hmm. appreciative oh thank you very much for coming to vietnam so, yeah and you also you also said um I think you had some pictures or video of your time there and at the menu, you said they were changing the values on that. They're starting to get the citizens aware of things. Yeah, I got the impression because, I mean, look, I'm actually, I took this out to show people, right? So it says that this is, because this is where I wanted to go with this. There's five, there's 500,000 dong. But you see, when you got that many zeros on the notes, what they've been doing is they've been chopping the zeros and just putting 500. So it's on menus, it's on prices, on, on um, taxis. I, I saw it a lot there. And that's a typical thing they would do is when they do revalue a currency, they did it in Turkey, they just shave a load of zeros off mm -hmm. as to get sort of more people. So that would go from 500,000 to 500 once the sort of valuation is redone. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a bit of a, everywhere I went, it was like that in, in Vietnam. They're shaving the zeros off. So what we would consider that, David, is a lop. That just means they removed the three zeros, but I don't want people to get it twisted. That does not mean that because they're doing that, that that's where it's going to stay. They're still going to yeah. RI that currency because we're waiting for China, Taiwan to ensue. We know that has to start happening soon before Trump's back optically because when he comes in, that's all going to shut down. So it's going to have to happen here sooner or later. And when that does, it's our strong belief, as we've discussed, that that's going to lift and alleviate Vietnam enough out of communism to free up that that dong currency to to be backed by silver and other things. Yeah, and I can see, I can see that country just you know when that happens, John, Vietnam is going to be what a fantastic place because mm -hmm. you know once you the because the people are very hardworking, 
and I didn't see any of them complaining and they weren't miserable. They were happy and smiling. Um, so once they get that injection of the currency revaluation, I can see that they're not going to be all leaving and going to Disneyland or going to Berlin. The, right. All of that money is going to be plowed back in, back into Vietnam. It's going to be resorts and hotels and mm -hmm. humanitarian projects and farmland expansion. Because flying over it, it was just vast, 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 vast amounts of what looked like jungle from looking out the airplane and very mountainous and beautiful as well. And then there was huge rice paddies everywhere. And I still saw a lot of people working in by hand, exactly like it looked like, you know, you took a picture from the Stanley Kubrick production or, or Coppola, Francis Ford Coppola did that Vietnam movie where there's workers in the paddy fields. So I can see all that getting industrialized and it'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. But the people, I would love to see that happen sooner than later because, you know, the people need it. The whole world needs it. The whole world needs it, yeah. Well, we're, you're going to. I mean, there's just too many things that are happening, you know. And then, real quick, I, I, I mean, we talked about this offline, but for the people, there's just, I think everybody knows by now, there's just a, a, a maelstrom of things happening with Iraq. Uh, most notably, they're go what I thought was, was curious, David, and you know from history, typically Ramadan happens in June. You can set your watch to it. This year, it's happening March, our March 10th in the States, uh, yeah. the 11th over there. You and said that. You said that. I thought it was done by um, some sort of lunar event like Easter, but I'm probably I could be wrong. I don't know. But if it's you almost every it's every June. Typically, is when they've done it the last several years that I've been in this, and they're doing it March this year, March 10th, which would be our 10th would be the 11th for them, and then Eid al Fitr ends on the 9th. So basically, it's roughly the 10th to the 10th. And what's what we do know we've reported on is that. Um, Sudani has made uh, official plans to go to the U.S. sometime in the first week of April, towards the end of Ramadan, with Janine from the U.N., because she ends her term in May, and she's already vowed that she wants the R.I. of Iraq to happen on her watch before prior to leaving. So they're going to let the U.S. know that they have every intention of coming back to the international stage and that they want the U.N. to pump up uh, or turn on the switch to return their, their values back to their their full potentiality on an asset back digital platform and and there's a bit of disinformation not intentionally but going out there about i heard things about two dollars sixty cents no we showed articles david months ago you've seen in my telegram we back it up that they're going back to pre-1940s rates yeah, what were yeah. those rates then four dollars and seven cents now we're, we're not getting into dates and rates i'm just talking historical facts so when people get it twisted but four dollars seven cents, you have to adjust it for the rate of inflation, which would be roughly four twenty five. So we believe that's where it will start, based on what they've said and 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 committed to, and then it will just free float on a on an open system, and we'll see where it goes from there. But you have Erdogan and Macron who've committed to coming first week of April as well to sign the oil and gas law, to sign the reforms, the taxes and tariffs, all the things necessary to bring Iraq on the international stage, and then you have the WTO, World Trade Organization, they've done enough to complete their requirements. It's looking like March 20th to 25th, what we're seeing for that to happen. So you have a lot of bang, bang plays kind of toppling over each other uh, to culminate for these events. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the question I get asked a lot is, well, what makes you think it's going to happen? Why would Iraq um, revalue? And what, what's so valuable about that place? You know, But you've got to understand that they're sitting on so much oil. And also the other commodities. More than that. There'll be gold, platinum, silver, you know. Rhodium, it's, diamonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Endless amounts of raw materials that there is high demand for worldwide, not just the petroleum industry. It's everything else that they've got in this country. So when the world wants all the commodities and you got it, of course, you, you're going to have to buy it in their local currency, as you would expect, but they'll do something else. They'll do an international currency. So it's going to force prices up because their economy is doing mm -hmm. so good and their buying power and the GDP. So they've been artificially held with a, their head underwater uh, for, for a long time, because even before we had Saddam situation, Operation Desert Storm, the real history behind the whole country is being controlled by the CIA for a long, long, long time. The British go back to the 40s, the 30s. They're trying to get their little sticky fingers and all the petroleum. Um, just briefly, just to let people know they're watching, Saddam 
Hussein was the bodyguard slash driver of the previous regime, the president, and he was paid by the CIA to kill the president. And he failed at it and he had to flee to Syria and wait it out until they actually got him back in power. So Iraq as a country, as a nation, has been under the influence of all of these external powers from the West, keeping their economy in a bad state of affairs, keeping everything low priced so they can take advantage of it and reap the rewards and wring out every last drop from that sponge of wealth. So now that the, um, the big bad wolf has been uh, leaving or thrown out, this is where things are going to, like you say, going back to the 1940s and 50s, where their economy is appreciated and the value of their money is what it should be. So there's a lot of history that you have to understand as well. That's for the sake of the audience, John. I know you know about that. Sure. Well, the other consideration, David, to all the cogent points you made, right, is that somebody who says that obviously doesn't know the history, like you said, but also doesn't realize that Iraq's been on a controlled, suppressed program rate, which is only supposed to last a year, and it's been going on for 14 years. You have Maliki, who's a Sortero Obama holdover, and let's not forget him, because the minute that Sudani comes back from the States to Iraq, that's when all heck is going to break loose, and you're going to see Maliki. He's already starting to jibber-jabber. That's going to intensify. There's going to be a showdown between Sudani and Maliki, and there needs to be because it's good versus evil, and it's the old versus the new. And then you have Israel waiting in the wings. We've got a lot of stuff going on the Houthis and the Red Sea, right, that the media is not reporting. Surprise. And, you know, Iran figures prominently in that, which, as we said before, they're running into the safety of the BRICS. Um, but you also have an interesting case, David, where you have the, the WTO and the BRICS asking Iraq to join almost simultaneously into their system. But Putin made it clear that he wants Iraq to RI prior to them coming on board. So again, Russia and China have a vested interest in it. Thank goodness for us around the world, because they're, they're pushing the issue. But watching the Israel situation on the side to make their grave mistake with the secret attack, as we said before, I, I bring it up for emphasis, those who haven't heard it already, the nuclear power plants that are going to get hit. And that's going to bring a cacophony of things that will take people's eyes off of Iraq, focus on the whole of the Middle East, which then we believe, when I say we, the team, brings about China, Taiwan. So it's going to be you know, one thing after the other. And then if you like a nice segue, David, don't forget we have Zimbabwe's elections coming yeah. up in August. Chimisa has said there's three points of business, just like Trump, and his first day back, there's three points of business he wants to do. Establish the sovereignty of his people, remove the corruption, right, the drug smuggling and all that, sex trafficking, and restore all dollars and bonds back to a gold asset. We reported last week that their digital gold token can support 737 kilograms of gold, to be precise, and they have every intention to come back to the gold standard because they have it. That's a, that's a huge shot across the bow for this movement and the financiers for those who, who have been paying attention to this. Yeah, there's a lot to consider. It's very hard to follow if you haven't been. I mean, you live and breathe this stuff, and I, I, right. I get my foot wet <laughs> on a daily basis with this. But you're um, you're following a lot more little chess moves that the world and the political movements are all making, especially about this. John, you told me yeah. a couple of weeks ago about Trump going out to Iraq. Is that a true story? Then did he fly out there? Yes, from what we can gather, we had to corroborate a little bit of it, but there's two sort of two contacts we have that did confirm he went out a little over two weeks ago, and he didn't just meet with Sudani. What we found out is he also met with Abadi as well, because Abadi is still a, a fan of the people. Even though he didn't keep his promises, he's been regretting that, kicking himself, and he wants he wants he needs redemption, a second chance. So it's going to be curious to see if Sudani takes on this next term or if he bequeaths it to a body to take over the new system, you know, because Sudani is risking his life to do this. But yeah, no, um, and people are like, well, how can he be at the border? And I'm like, he didn't go the same day he went to the border. He went way before he went very quietly. If you, if you recall in history, I think it was what, 2018, I believe it was late 18. He flew over to the troops in Iraq unannounced. Yeah, they didn't yeah. even know what's coming. So he's, he's done this before, but he's, I assure you, like you said on another show, he's not going over there to build golf exactly. resorts and things like that. He's, this, he's got a primary focus of this. And we had a, a, a contact that told us, uh, what was it five years ago in July of 19, he told us that Trump could work with a body and make it happen. And all he needed was a month to do it. Now, I'm, not, I'm just saying historical replication. 
now you have a case where he's over there and he's very covertly worked to make this happen. Because, see, the two, two main things, too, David, that, that Iraq must do is they must extricate themselves from the Iranian proxies, especially that are in their government, right? Just like we have a corrupt government, as we know, in the U.S., you and, well, not so much Spain, but London, your, you know, your government. Oh, they're all corrupt. That. We know that. But there's oh, yeah, more really, yeah. severe yeah. cases of it. Yeah, I mean, it's this copycat kind of mirroring that we're seeing throughout the entirety of the world. They have to do that, and they have to get rid of the U.S. deep state off their back because the U.S. hates competition. But they're going to get it anyway because they just they can't stop it. Now with Iraq's under the auspices of BRICS and now the WTO, there's too many people who need this to happen. Even the bad people like Janine at the U.N., need this to happen for financial and for a legacy. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people who, who, who don't want this to happen. There's a lot of people who do want it to happen, but Iraq is just far too wealthy. Uh, they're the next Dubai in, incumbent. And, you know, how can, you know, to the person who said, well, why, why Iraq? Why, how do you explain all these countries like Germany, Siemens and US with GE and China and Russia funding their Belt and Road Initiative over there and, and making Baghdad Airport one of the most uh, um, abundant and illustrious airports in the world. They're building the largest building in the entire Middle East, right in downtown Baghdad. Why would they be putting massive resources in this country if they didn't have the economics to support it and there wasn't a movement to bring it back? Yeah, and it's what do they know that we don't is the old scenario. If they're starting yeah. to pump billions and trillions of dollars into reinvesting in the infrastructure. This mm -hmm. money, this money has got to come from somewhere. And it's not the right. American economy that's putting it into it. They're too busy sending money to the Ukraine to worry about building well, the downtown building in Baghdad. That's but, just going, that's just money laundering. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know right. that. So what else have you been um, monitoring? Give us some of the other well, interviews. Well. well, yeah, thank you for that, David. Um, here's another interesting thing, just piggybacking off what you just talked about with our our U.S. deep state economy. So this is interesting. I'm going to read this verbatim. Genevieve Roche, who's on X, uh, reported the other day, I think a couple of days ago, and I kept it because I thought it was significant. I just got off an interview about an hour ago with Bill Holter, who is a, a seminal expert in all things financial and really knows the metals market particularly. So they're saying that the U.S. debt is rising one trillion every hundred days. That's basically a trillion a quarter. Um, according to this, according to Bank of America. So Bank of America is even being forced to disclose this. They estimate it'll take just 95 days for the debt to climb from uh, 35 from 34 trillion compared to the 92 days it took to, to grow it in the past. So they're, they're admitting this. And then you had, I'm sure you saw uh, New York Bank Corps, which is a community bank in the Northeast. They have now reported a 40% loss in stock options and have traded, halting their trading that's over three billion in uh, balance book balance uh, budget losses realized. So, you know, it makes you wonder what that means as a domino effect for all the major banks. And also, I think it speaks highly, David, to Basel III and the importance of that because we talked about a while ago. For those who don't remember, Basel III is a Switzerland uh, international system of checks and balances whereby it focuses primarily on banks' ability to show their balance sheets, their transparency of how much gold and silver they're physically carrying. And if they're not carrying the whatever that required amount is, they're out, which would suggest to me that a lot of banks are going bye-bye because of that, and that we are actually going to a, a digital asset-backed system backed by lots of different precious metals. And, and Bill and I were talking about that on the show, and that's what you're going to see with all these foreign currencies going through BRICS um, to de-dollarize and, and have something real for something real. Because people are tired of, these countries are tired of pumping out goods and services, sending them to America and getting dollars for it. So we would see a situation whereby a, a lot of dollar dumps are going to come back stateside from a lot of rich foreign countries. And <clears throat> that's why, again, not a financial advisor, not giving financial advice, just telling you what we see and what we recommend is when you get your exchange and you do it, either try to do two things. One, exchange those currencies for physical tangible assets. So when you get your exchange, buy land, buy we you know, weapons, metals, heirloom seeds. You know. Weapons. Well, I mean, no, there's in America, that's that's a thing. I mean, you're going <laughs> to see a lot of people loading up. I mean, because, because not, it's not just whether or not you agree with guns. What, what backs the guns? Munitions, right? Uh, uh, bullets, which yeah. have brass and silver in them. 
they're 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 very tradable commodity. We're going to a bartering society. I think oh, I, yeah, I, I get you on that. You know, that is going to be self defense. You know, ninety six percent of the guns are owned in red states, but right. ninety six percent of gun crimes that I'm talking like false Crime flags, states. shootings in schools and the movie theaters are in blue states. How weird is that? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Just a coincidence, though. Oh, it's just a coincidence, mate. <laughs> All yeah, right. And then so the other thing you could do is I've heard it talked about <clears throat> with respect to J.P. Morgan, <clears throat> excuse me, the option to do your exchange and, and get gold and silver for it. Well, my thing is you should probably be buying gold and silver post RV anyway. Right. So having that diversified portfolio of land, metals, weapons, heirloom seeds you know, real things, you know, interesting, David, um, I was just thinking about this, uh, I think it was like 10, 15 years ago, Forbes interviewed some of the richest families at that time. And they said, how have you been able to maintain their wealth? And one of the families said three key things, precious metals, um, uh, land or, or the deed to the house, right, yeah. real estate, and uh, fine arts, rare huh. vintage paintings, because you can't get that stuff anymore. Yeah. So, you know, rare, rare motorcycles, rare classic cars, rare musical instruments that, you know, Steinways that were made 100 years ago that are still in pristine condition with the ivory. You know, yeah. that's in my wheelhouse. But but things of tangible worth that you can control and possess that are vintage value you can't get anymore. That, yeah, that yeah. is a great way to go. Well, I've got the car sorted out. I've already got that. Okay. <laughs> um, what do you think? Just maybe veering off subject. Sure. The world's been doing deals in U.S. dollars. So let's just specifically talk about most of the commodity trading. It's always quoted in U.S. dollars. Um, petroleum, barrels of oil, it's $100. It's $140 for a barrel of crude. What are they going to do about that, John? Where's that going to go then? Are they going to fix it in local currency? Are they going to fix it in a, in a digital currency when they're doing these deals of hundreds of thousands of tons of crude oil? What currency is going to be done in? Well, my understanding, as I've studied and talked to people on our team, is that it's uh, Russia and China are going to be largely responsible through the BRICS of kind of monitoring uh, the petroleum sales and the volume and who gets what, you know, because what's interesting, going back to Iraq, you know, we know about the oil, but what many people, many people may not realize is that they have some of the cleanest oil on the planet. It hardly has to be refined at all. Uh, high so quality. That in and of itself. Oh, super high quality. Same with Vietnam. They have some of the richest Brent crude in their oceans. So that becomes a very viable and valuable uh, trading platform uh, to work through the BRICS. But I think it's going to be orchestrated through the BRICS and they'll create some sort of system of measures by what the price is, is gauged by. But it's going to have to be tradable for real assets once again. And this also came, uh, to, came across my uh, purview today, David. Um, Nigeria is actually planning to join the BRICS as well which no. is interesting because they're not that far away from Zimbabwe. Yeah, so I mean, that's that, that would be the next progressive move for them, especially as all the African nations are rejecting European overlords, John. They're throwing them all out. They're refining all the raw materials themselves instead of sending gold bullion back to France. Mm. Um, they're doing it all in-house. So I'm not surprised at all. And Nigeria is a big contender in the crude market as well. Um, right. they, they have a lot of oil and that's... But again, the corruption in the country, that needs to be looked at. And hopefully that will be sorted and corrected because, again, redistribution of the wealth is what it's all about, getting the money back to the people that really deserve it. Right. Sort of off topic, David, but I just kind of, you know, you, you and I can kind of free float anything here about the, the various sundry subjects. I just realized that tonight is the State of the Union address for the Biden. And yeah. they're doing something historic. They're, they're putting <laughs> they're putting gates around the Capitol building once again, and they're doing two intermissions. That's never happened before. What do they need that for? Sure, because he's because he's he's a geriatric and can't get through ten minutes without a diaper change. I don't know. <laughs> switch, but out your... actor, switch out actors. I'm thinking more. Yeah, yeah, two. right. He's done. That dummy's worn out. Yeah. Get it. One, give them some <laughs> Red Bull. <laughs> um, I don't actually know what the State of the Union is. It's quite a funny terminology. Look at the State of the Union. <laughs> but yeah. I remember every year it happens. But is it isn't it an update? Is it what do they do? They they talk about what they're planning. Well, traditionally in the normal constructs, uh, the president <laughs> usually has a heart to heart with the people. 
both yeah. at the Congress and Senate, but he's speaking to the whole of, of America and kind of giving an appraisal of, you know, the last quarter, the last six months, where we are, where we go, where are we going, what are our initiatives going forward? It's 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 a chance for the president to talk openly to the public and give sort of their summation on where things are and how they see things playing out and what what goals they have going forward. Yeah. Okay. We don't need it. I mean, most Americans would know that it was just for my yeah. own curiosity. That I think it's a very strange terminology. Look at this. State of the Union, yeah. <laughs> and it's quite appropriate now, isn't it? With that, with that uh, guy, the realm, <laughs> the helm. Well, um, here's the other. Here's the other thing, David. We had Super Tuesday a couple of days ago, and I wasn't actually going to vote because I was like, you know, my, you know, is my vote really going to matter, especially here in California? But I did it reluctantly because I figured it's part of my finality of leaving here, and it's like just another closure thing. It was very interesting. It was the fastest in and out that I ever had going through it. It was clean. It was a paper ballot and it was easy to vote and Trump was on the ballot. And I th- I said, that's probably why he wants people to vote. He wants to take a temperature of who's going to vote for him, even in blue states, because he knows he'll get the lock for the red ones. And they had same day results and he won in a landslide in California. He won every state in the country except for Vermont. Really? For yeah. um, has that been public? Been made public? Uh, I- I've gotten the information. I don't know if the media has reported it, but I got a hold of it, and that's how I was able to find out. Um, I'm sure if you dig or you connect with you know the right links, you can find that. Yeah, I've been switched off from some of the geopolitical the last um, week or so. I've been taking a little break from it. Um, sure. Where do you want to go next, John? You've got a few other things on your list. There. Um, well, I, I do you have the. Uh, I, I think we talked about this. Do you have the video up of? Yeah, you want to have a look? The, yeah, Let me yeah. I want people to then. see, you know, what you saw. Sure, mate. Well, that'll take me a minute to queue. So you have a little chat about something else while I go. Um, Well, let's see. We could talk about, uh, let's see, we talked about Iraq, uh, Vietnam. Um, I'm just, I'm going through my list here. So just bear with me. A lot of, a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, Let's see. We talked about Zimbabwe. We talked about that. So, oh, I did want to ask you what your take on uh, Victoria Newland retiring. What did, what did you think about that? I think there's some sort of ploy going on there, like a distractional piece of bait, because, you know, the way that these guys work is they'll say, oh, she's retired. You know, for example, we can't let Biden be um, running again. So we're going to put obviously the vice president is going to go in there. I mean, I'm thinking maybe they're going to put somebody else in this is a bit of a turncoat. So somebody else. I don't know. I don't know. It's obviously. The DeSantis thing was quite clear. He didn't have the money. Mm -hmm. And then they started pushing Nikki. And I think the public opinion is just like crippled her. Everyone's saying that, you know. And the worst thing about it was when she was talking about the Ukraine and she hadn't a clue when the (laughs) Indian, what's the Indian guy said? What's he called? Modi? Yeah. No, 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 not the Indian president. The other senator that's running. The other. Oh, uh, Vivek? You're talking about Vivek? Yeah, Tim. Yeah. He said to her, all that money you've sent trying to do this and that, I bet you can't even tell me the two states where, you know, in, and she just, there was this blank deer in headlights look. And I think her public her rating is just tanked, totally just fell through the floor. And um, who, they, I think, well, bottom line, instead of the waffling, because I'm kind of waffling here, trying to find a no, way to fine. explain it. There's something else that got planned. They've removed her. They're going to, there's going to be a little surprise and who else is going to be the candidate? Who else can they put in there? Um, you know who it could be? It could be JFK Jr. What they're talking about? What is it? The Kennedy, because he's mm-hmm. very well spoken. He's very smart. He's not that far removed from Trump. He believes in making America great again. And uh, let's put a lighter version in of a, a Democratic candidate. I think mm-hmm. it could be him. And I think that I think Trump would actually raise an eyebrow about that, saying, "Oh, at least he's got some." decent opposition who's smart who could do a debate imagine a trump debate between them two yeah. and i i've heard trump talk about him and i think he respects him and quite likes him mm-hmm. and in, in, in all honesty john as much as i'm a trump fan he wouldn't be a bad president i think i think he'd be very honest well it's, it's like you said you know like you said uh there there's a lot of of, of, of interconnections and interplay between the trumps and the kennedys they're, yeah, they're yeah yeah closely knit so, you know, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how that all plays out. I, I always thought it'd be cool to see him pick up Kristen Noemi 
She yeah. was the governor for South Dakota because South Dakota is the most, they're tax-free, they're property tax-free, best state to do business in, bar none in the country. It's the most constitutionally friendly state, most uh, one of the most uh, uh, weapon-friendly states. Uh, so it's just very easy to to live and, and work she, there. She's quite an attractive woman. It was very oh yeah yeah, yeah. she's stunning and smart. Yeah. I mean she's a total package. But if you get her, then who replaces her? That's the that's the rub. Yeah know? yeah yeah. So, she's a good option too. Um, yeah, I she, found the um, I found the Vietnam video you were asking about. Okay, real that's quick. Also, while you're doing that, um, this is new news that came out today. China's proposing international. We just put it on our Telegram. China's proposing uh, international conference peace plans between Russia and Ukraine. So you're seeing the BRICS again. While well, you have all this, this manufactured chaos from the fake news, you have the, the, the right side, the good guys are, are implementing a solution for every problem. There's a peace plan for every catastrophe that the deep state wants to create. So people can see clear and present options against you know, the narrative that they've been fed for far too long. Yeah. Um... But well, that's what we want. We want this. We want this transparency and people right. to understand that this is, this is all positive. There's so many restrictions in people's lives, and you know, you need a permit to paint your front door, your house. You got to have this. You got to have that. And in these countries, they understand that people need the freedom. And this is supposed to be a communist country, where I didn't see any signs of any restrictions. You know, there was alcohol there. You could go to this, those clubs. You you know, with nice cars. I saw expensive cars. Communism. In a true form, I don't believe in because we've seen what happens, you know, when um, such as in China, when they are restricted. But in Vietnam, it just seems to work. I don't know why people are left alone. They, they don't seem to be bothered. Um, and it was interesting that because the word communism, you know, immediately like they're scared to go outside. And like in China, you've got a social app. You've got to use your phone. And if you've not got a green light. But mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of any of that. In, in Vietnam, and those train lines are right in the center of town, and they have all these cafes there. They utilize all the, the real estate, and there's the right train coming. Everyone gets pulled off the tables, and literally, you can reach out and touch the train. I mean, it would never allow that in any Western country for fear of, you know, someone getting injured. Obviously, it is a bit crazy, but I, I kind of like that, you know, where there's so many rules and restrictions in your life these days, where you have that Wild West kind of attitude. But what a country and if you're in the mood to go out and have a little look around asia oof, i would definitely recommend it i saw so many westerners there john there's a lot of europeans uh, those americans i heard people from all over the world there australians and um i met some canadian people at the airport um it was a yeah an eye-opening trip about you know how people tell you don't go out there it's dangerous and that's the other thing there's there's no crime or anything i'll give you an example there's a city to the south called hoi an and it's uh, at night time there's these beautiful that was the the river the bridge thing with all the lights and the boats going past at night time it's so be it's one of the most beautiful places i've ever been to it's like italy without all the chaos and screaming and uh, I said to the guy in the hotel, okay, I want to take a car down there and I want to come back around nine o'clock tonight, but I know it's a coast road, about 45 minutes. Is it safe to come back on that road at night? And his English was perfect. He said, I don't understand the question. <laughs> I said, hmm. is that road safe to travel at night? He said, I'm sorry, I don't understand. What do you mean safe? I said, well, in Cambodia, there's cattle wandering around everywhere. Or do they go on the road? No, no, there's no cattle wandering around here. I said, what about robberies? Are they stopping the tourists? He said, what? It's just, I might as well have asked him, am I likely to see aliens on the road tonight? It, it, it was the same reaction, like, what are you talking about? Are you like, he's, he, did I understand? He's asking his, his fellow guy at the reception, did I understand that question right? It, didn't, it doesn't enter into the head. Crimes. Yeah. Very safe, very safe. Whereas you, in the, you know, there's parts in there's parts in the states that you you you, you speculate where they all know. If the weird thing about America is how the streets change in this in the space of two blocks, it can be really nice right. townhouses and and what it, yeah properties. And you go two blocks the wrong way. It's like holy shit, where am I? This looks like a, a bomb site. You know, it's bizarre that. So yeah, there you go, yeah. Vietnam, great country. I've got absolute faith in um, what they're going to do when they are be revalued. I think it's going to be one of the most interesting countries to live in. And I think all of these countries, John, Iraq, 
You know, you go out, you go out there after that, after the the revaluation, getting involved in business and import exporting. When you you know they're going to be they're going to be crying out for industrial and intelligent people to start getting back on the feet. The projects for humanitarian aid, bringing water to the desert, like Saddam did, uh, like um, like Gaddafi did. I mean, all that stuff is going to be fantastic to watch. Yeah, you know, it's <clears throat> I'm glad you circled back to Iraq because I forgot to tell you a kind of I thought an important point for you and the audience to know, which is uh, a good military friend of mine who retired from the army a few, about five years ago now, five, five or six years ago. Anyway, he uh, he was a contractor over there and he did, you know, he bit in combat. And he also did some government, you know, work over there. And one of the projects they were tasking him with was to help uh, drill for water over there in Iraq, right? Because, yeah. you know, you got so much sand concentration, six feet deep of sand, and you'll find, you know, precious metals and, you know, di diamonds and all those sundry things we've already discussed. So, you know, drilling for water is, is they have it, but it's, it's a tricky process. Uh, so what they do is they drill down below the surface to get it. And they create, like we do here in the States, and I'm sure you have in Spain, those sewer grates, right? Yeah. And when they're doing that, the minerals that are, supplicated under the ground as they're drilling, you're moving, shifting, you know, the earth tectonic plates, a lot of those, those fine granulars of gold come up to the surface and find their way around the grates. So the way that Iraq pays the U.S. contractors is they let them keep whatever flex no of gold they get. Yeah, that's how they get paid. No way, really. There's that much gold out. I mean, that, there you go straight away. These these bits of tidbits of information that's fascinating you say okay i'll give you the i'll give you the scavenging rights <laughs> when you deal well, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's crazy that well they just reported again david uh i had it here a minute ago they reported that uh okay central banks go for gold in january pointing to the uh, third straight year of strong demand uh iraq has uh, uh let's see i just had it here a second ago give me a second um uh, among them is Iraq, five Arab countries with more than a thousand tons of gold reserves. Wow! So that just that tells you that they've got plenty full amounts of that stuff. I uh, I have to ask you the elephant in the room question, which has yeah. been discussed already many times. Uh, as you know, uh, I think it was late late last week. Uh, Rothschild, Jacob Rothschild, one of the most yeah. evil people on the planet for banking and other things, uh, dead at eighty seven, which is young for that family. Exactly. Um, what what signal did that send to you? Because I've got thoughts about that one. To see what what going. what signals his death? It's the the death of the whole Rothschild banking uh, cartel, mm -hmm. isn't it? Really, you know. And then there was that strange ceremony of two guys on horseback riding through London with a black flag. I mean, no one's really decoded that properly, unless I've missed it. But yeah, all of these top people that are in control, like you say, eighty seven, he, he's just in these primary uh, stealing, thieving, <laughs> child trafficking, organizing days. Why would he die so early? But exactly, and it's it's um it's these bits of intel that say this is the death of the cartel that were the Rothschilds. So, um, but there was another one died a few months ago as well. Um, a yeah, couple right. of years ago, there's been a they are they are slipping away. It's quite a few of them uh, that are slipping out there. Um, it's good news for us because it means that then it, it, here's another interesting thing, John, I've got a, a, an account I pay bills with. It won't let me send swift transfers anymore. And so many people are still in denial that the swift system, the banking system, I, I it says no swift unavailable. You have to use it, um, a bank to bank one now. So instead of that three day period where you're sending money and it goes into la la land for three days mm -hmm. and everyone's um skating it and using it manipulating it and uh now the money's goes with this quantum system just instantly gets there within a couple of minutes and they don't have time the banks that the intermediate banks don't have time to take advantage of that three four day period where they've got hundreds of millions floating around and say okay well we can use this for a few days before we have to give it to him so the banking system has changed the rules and regulations and the swift was notorious for being um in the in in the prime for this nefarious transactions that they were doing and funding a lot of their black ops so yeah even on my simple online bank that i use oh no you can't use a swift or what are you even putting it on here for because if you hit okay and go to another one whatever it is sends the money there's no problem yeah 
Well, it, the reason I asked you that question about Rothschild because it was deceptively more complex than people might think. I asked Bill that question today, and his response is sort of glib. He didn't think it mattered because he said, "Well, they're just they're, the empire turns over to the to the children." Here's the thing, right? It's I I think he's underestimating the importance of the death of Rothschild. To your point, because just because you pass it on to the next generation doesn't mean they're going to do as good of a job as their predecessors, right? So. You know, you look yeah. at, for example, Steinbrenner with the Yankees, you know, when George passed, he gave it to his sons. They haven't had anywhere near the success that they had under their father. They've won one World Series championship in the last uh, almost 20 years since he passed, roughly 15, 20 years. So mm -hmm. they haven't had any. And you can say, well, that's drafting and all that, but it is also about leadership. So I don't think that the kids are going to do anywhere near to the level uh, that their their father, their 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 yeah, it happens. It there. absolutely happens. But I had something else I was going to talk about there. What was the other thing? Mm -hmm. It'll come back to me. Um, the whole relinquishing of the power. And you see, more and more people are aware of what's going on now. They can't hide in plain sight anymore. They can't convince us that black is white and white is black and up and down, etc. There's, there's, it's more, more and more people are coming out with it. And as people are getting wise, for example, you know, you put a thousand dollars in the bank, the bank then takes 90% of that and, you know, put it all together, give it to a car loan and it's all transferred. So the whole way that the banking system works is, is it's set up for them to imaginary make up money, loan it to people that they've never had it in the first place, get it back off them, do the whole thing again. And the way that the system works is once somebody puts a thousand dollars in an account within a matter of a, a couple of weeks, they've made a hundred thousand dollars, but it, it's just circulating. It's never really there. Right. So people are understanding this whole banking um car I keep saying cartel, but it is a cartel, and you know the, oh, sure. the, the power that they've got behind it. Then they of course, because they've got the money, because they've got the power there, it, it doesn't interest them anymore, John. They can't, you know. They could buy, buy a brand new Ferrari every day of the week. They're not interested. But what they are interested in is control. So what they start doing is using their funding and manufacturing the food industry to control it, keep it all stupid, put the programming on the television so people mm -hmm. watching that pay for the news so people are always worried about, oh, yeah, I better stay in, I better stay in my job so because mortgage rates are going to go up. I need a bit more money. can't afford to, chew, to change right now. All of this darkness that they've used to enslave the people because it all boils down to money and once this redistribution of wealth happens people are not going to make the same decisions anymore the the crime is going to go down robberies are going to go down murders will go down because most of these times it's always money orientated people don't go out and say you know what where's my car keys i'm going to kill somebody there i'm just in the mood you know there's obviously this psychopaths out there but people make bad decisions based because they need the money. They're trying to they're trying to pay for something, get something, pay somebody off, put food on the table, put diapers on the kids. So the other thing is, if you if we realize that this is the end of the U.S. dollar and its power, when they're going to remove it from the trading platforms around the world and go into um, some form of currency that Russia and China are, are going to um, be involved with it and reintroduce. What are you going to hold on to? You want to hold on to something that's going to have value. Now, you've mentioned gold and silver, but this is what I love about the currencies, specifically the, you know, the dong and the, and the dinar. Because as an average person who's working very hard paying mortgages, to be able to get involved in something on a low level, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, getting the currencies, I think this is great. I think it's great because, you know, I've got them here on the desk, I was showing them. The Vietnamese dong, and you can spend that today. You know, the Zimbabwe notes are, are also a, a good bet, but you can't spend them. So anybody who wants to get these currencies, it's real money. It's real currency. At the end of the mm -hmm. day, if something happens, you need to cash it in, cash it in. You can just go and change it. So I, lo I love this. I think it's an investment opportunity for people that don't always, you know, I know nothing about the stock market. I've never bought stock in my life, not one. And uh, but this you understand because it's it's basic maths and the business and that's worth something. I keep it. If it goes up, amazing. If it doesn't, okay, I can always chop it in. That's what I like about the currencies, John, and why I like talking about this because informing people about why we are so convinced that all this is going to happen, the political movements that Trump is making, 
with Sudani going out to Iraq. And I've been to these countries that I can see, oh my God, the potential here. Because anybody is an investment wise, if they go and have a look and say, oh, this is a good one. Vietnam, fertile, fertile place, no problems with water, green fields everywhere, lost tropical jungle. You can go out and buy yourself a mango plantation and happy days. <laughs> Right. So, yeah, I love it. The currencies to me are a great one for the average Joe on the street to get involved with. No, uh, completely. Um, you had not mentioned something. You showed me a picture about the uh, the menu in Vietnam. Yeah, I don't know what changing. I did with that. Did I send it to you? You did, but it was a few weeks back. I don't know. If I'll I have can... a look. It'll be on there. We'll show that because sure. um, I'll find it on our correspondence. If you, if you find it, I'll, I'm going to share something with the audience, a very nice tidbit that's just exclusive right now for you, Mahoney, which is, um, so I have a friend who is a manager for a nursing facility in Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, we'll call, we'll call her Kathy. That's, well, that's her code name. And she works for one of the largest, I can't mention the company name, but they're one of the largest healthcare providers for hospitals and elderly nursing care facilities. And she's in Kentucky and she's got her ear to the ground pretty well about she's, she's very awake to what's going on in the financial movement and the geopolitical and as it relates to med beds and what she was telling me is that they're she's seeing wholesale changes in the hospital they're changing staff out not as many doctors to take appointments they're changing the look and the landscape of the rooms where the equipment previously was she was there last friday they have now in, one of the managers of the hospital has confided to her that the scanner they're changing the scanner devices because they'll be able to use light and frequency infrared therapy to cure cancer, Alzheimer's, we know a host of all other illnesses that are, you know, man-made and, and mm -hmm. inflammatory based, right? Through the food and the water and the chemicals yeah. and all the rest of it that we already, everybody knows. Um, and she said that the manager admitted that they're being trained on this scanner right now and that they see this product coming out in the very foreseeable future. I'm not going to give uh, as I don't know the date, obviously, but I, I have a good idea of the time frame. but it's in the foreseeable future. And I just said med beds and she got quiet. And so wow. you can read between the lines on that. Don't give anybody the address of that facility. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. That's super good news because that's another thing I, I, I'm very keen on. Let's get the medicine sorted out because I know there's technology out there. I know this, the, the light frequency and the healing 740 hertz works. They've, I've seen scientific um, testing on um, pancreatic cancer cells and they hit it mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. 740 and it works. John, I can't find that picture, buddy. And if I spend right. five minutes, you know, but no, that, take my word, they, they changed the menus. Also, 430, 4, 430, I'm sorry, 432 and 928 are also God's frequencies. And we put that on our Telegram channel. Uh, John Nego from Currency365 is now doing a new set of frequencies, uh, and we put those on so people can use them for free. And um, I'm told that a lot of there's several people that have tried them and, and like them, so they do have a healing effect. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually working on something myself. I am um, on okay. that. So yeah, I've actually um, sent some specifications to a manufacturer for something I'm doing with them: um, ozone and uh, light frequency and sound frequency i want to see if i can blend all specs together john we hit the top of the hour any closing comments statements anything else you'd like to share with the audience yeah thank you for the opportunity as always mate it's great to work with you always a pleasure i always look forward to these uh, <laughs> yeah. these chats that we have because they think it's very educational and comprehensive um i want to let people know that um, we're doing a couple new things on our channel uh it's realworldac.com we're creating a platform it's a free uh, community chat side where patriots can talk together. And then we've got a, uh, a membership, a lifetime membership. And that's for where I, I think you were, we're gonna, we were talking to you about possibly being an adjunct professor as it relates yeah. to geopolitical. So, you know, Nick's going to be involved. There's going to be several people that are quality um, truthers in the community that will do this. And it, it's, it's got a myriad of focuses. It's, you know, for people who feel sort of ostracized or, you know, uh, uh, castaways in their family. I certainly understand that. Uh, it's a way for, for patriots to come together. It's ways to create streams of income from your own home on mm -hmm. multiple platforms so you can leave your job. It's changing the educational system from the old system that we've gone to, you know, in our traditional constructs and new ways of, you know, home educating. It's connecting with other business owners 
for products. Also, if you have a product and you want to do like a, a channel partnership, for instance, you can do that. But what's also exciting is that the, the members will be able to connect with people like you and Nick and myself and, and get live chats and get you know, feedback and answers from the source in real time. So there's not this delineation like there is in current. We're also getting we're getting issues where our numbers are getting messed with on, you know, the big platforms or oh, yeah, yeah. shadow banned in some cases. And that we only see that becoming more problematic. So this is a kind of a really cool channel we're creating uh, that it's going to be a lot more inclusive for, you know, a very uh, finite audience. Yeah, I like the sound of that. We'll keep us all posted on that. John, we'll see you in the next one very soon. And for the sake of the audience, if you would like to get any of the currencies we've talked about tonight, there's a link below. You can contact um, them and organize whatever you want. There's, um, I don't think there's a minimum entry. Is there a minimum purchase? I don't think so, no. I don't think so, no. No, you can get in for, you know, whatever you feel like. And again, the information we share is uh, designed to educate. So you know what we know, and this is why we share it, because um, it's what we do. John, I'll see you in the next one. And uh, thank you so much. As usual, you've always delivered a, a smashing show. And the intel and bits and pieces are great to um, follow up with. And we'll see you very soon. Thanks very much, folks. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And again, if you need to contact um, the professionals about some currency purchases, you know where they are. Right down there. John, we keep in touch. I'll probably talk to you tomorrow by uh, text message, which we normally do. Right. Sounds good, brother. Look forward Thank to you. it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.